What's up y'all, this is Dominic with Poor Pumper Society. I'm at a property today, we're gonna pump out their septic tank. It has not been opened up since 2017, so looking at about five years, which puts us in the time frame of the recommended three to five years, so not too concerned about it. I actually just did a walkthrough of the property and they are very easy to spot. Now, in this specific neighborhood, what they had is back in the 70s, even into the early 80s, they had cesspits. So what a cesspit is, they would dig a round hole and then stack up concrete rings and then put a lid on it. So what would happen is, unlike the conventional septic tanks we have today, which is a fully enclosed concrete container, the cesspits would have a open bottom. So the affluent or the dirty water would start seeping through the bottom. So we actually run into a lot of these that last a really, really long time because if your drain field isn't that big, you also have that bottom floor where stuff is seeping out. So a lot of these systems can last a lot longer. The only problem is you're potentially polluting the groundwater, which is why they are outlawed. You can't install cesspits or seepage pits anymore. It has to be a septic tank with a gravity field or an aerobic system with a spray field. So I'm gonna get this tank dug up and then we're gonna see what we have on the inside. I'm hoping it's in good shape, but a lot of these older systems, they start not wanting to absorb through the bottom and the concrete starts deteriorating. So we're gonna pop it open and take a look. And if this is your first time watching, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. If you wanna check out any of the tools that I use in my video, you can check the description down below. Those are affiliate links, so they help out me and they help out the channel. And without further ado, let's get the pumping. So we've got our two tanks right here in the clean out right here next to the house. And you can see pretty obvious dead spots right here. That's because when these tanks are pretty shallow like this, the grass has a hard time growing because it dries out. And then got the green going out to the drain field. So I'm gonna dig up this right here. Usually the inlet lid is right over the inlet pipe. So I'm hoping it's just right here. If not, we're gonna have to start searching for it on the outside. And then we'll do the same thing on the outlet over here. So most of these are a thousand gallons uh, on the residential side. So we usually quote from like 750 gallons to 1500 gallons. So at least we're to the tank right here. You can see here's the edge of the tank so our inlet's gonna be a little bit further down here keep uncovering and hopefully get this pulled up a lot of times the, the lid will be right here by the inlet sometimes they put it dead center in the middle so we'll work around and see where this is at so we got a big chunk of the tank dug up found the handle they used to set the big lid over the tank but that's not the access port but digging a little bit out here we got a piece of plastic usually from what i've seen put plastic over these lids to kind of seal them up stop the dirt from getting in so i think we're on the right track right here so i'm gonna dig this up a little more and then see what we got all right pull this out one piece No, it's just a piece of plastic, what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like it's pretty thick. Oh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but no problem, I'll get that one pumped out. And then this one's gonna have another cap too. So I'll, I'm hoping it's right here, pretty close up to it. tank um, gas builds up over time so it'll actually start eating away at the concrete so 
if that lid has been getting thinner and thinner, a lot of times it'll just fall in the tank. Uh, I pumped out quite a few of these and every time I get to the bottom, I see at least one lid. So I, I know it had been replaced at one point or another. But uh, probably for this, to, that way you actually have something sturdy. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have like a pavement stone or something, kind of like a round stone. Not round, but a brick. Or a brick, that, that should be able to fit perfectly over there. Just to add that extra layer, that way you don't want anybody falling through that. No. <laughs> but uh, once I get this pumped out, I'll clean it, up, clean it off. That way it'll fit nice and smooth against it. Yeah, I'll get one. I'll get this other side dug up. Okay, so we got the inlet dug up right there. And this is two separate tanks. This is two separate round tanks. And there's that cap right here falling apart. So it was replaced with a trash bag. And we got the outlet right here, still intact, but you can see pretty small. My hand's not that big. <laughs> so got the outlet right there. If it doesn't come up with just this shovel, I've got my little pry bar on the truck. Yep, pry bar. All right, so we got the outlet. Shouldn't have that thick of a layer. Just a little bit, not too crazy. So we got both tank lids popped open. Well, the inlet side didn't even have a lid, but we found a concrete paver that we're gonna use as a replacement. I am gonna recommend risers. The opening is about the size of my hand, so it's not very big. So if we were to put risers, we'd have to put very, very small risers. And I think the smallest ones they make at the moment are a 12 inch diameter. So I am gonna recommend that just to have the lids to the surface because these round cesspit lids, whoever was operating the uh, excavator to drop it down, they should have put it over the inlet side, but instead they got it facing towards the outlet. So I think they did it backwards, but that way you won't have to start scraping up the whole tank lid to find the access port. So I'm gonna recommend that. As I said earlier, the tank hasn't been pumped out since 2017. So looking around the house, I could see children, toys, things like that. So I'm assuming we've got quite a few people living in this house. So that's probably why it got so thick. Definitely gonna have to use the crust buster on this one. Thank goodness I have the crust buster in situations like this. That way, as I'm pumping down, I can just mix it up and I don't have to worry about constantly trying to back flush. A lot of times too, if this is, say this is your first job, what are you gonna back flush if you have nothing but sludge in the tank. So in situations like that, you have to add a ton of water. Um, takes a lot more time is what I'm trying to say. But there are even instances where the crust, with the crust buster where I ran into tanks so thick that I have had to add a lot of water, blend it, pump it out, back flush it, add a little bit more water, blend it up. So there are situations where you're gonna have to do more than just use the crust buster, but they're very far and few in between. And in, still, I'm glad I have it in times like that. Back in the day, used to just have to chip away at it, grab a shovel, try and break it up, do little by little. And then if you have like over 200 feet of hose, your pump is struggling to pull straight sludge. It needs water to help it be able to vacuum that far of a distance. So I'm about to go out, drop my hoses down, get ready to pump this tank out, and then move on to the next one.
So we got that job all finished up. You can see I am soaking wet, covered in sweat. Uh, even just very minimal, small, nothing too crazy jobs. Stop breaking a sweat over here in Texas. But next week, it is supposed to drop down to, uh, I believe the highs of about 83, which by then might need a hoodie. It seems like every time in Texas it gets that cold, cold, everybody starts bringing out the jackets. I'm kidding, of course, I love the cool weather. But yeah, that does it for this job. Got both the lids popped open. I flagged it for the customer and I'm gonna do an inspection report. So what that entails, I'm gonna mark the location of the tank. We did a function and flow test to make sure the drain field was working properly. And it's gonna include pictures of everything. The clean out, top of the tank, inside the tank, all the baffles inside of the tank, the PVC. So that way, whoever purchases the property will have the peace of mind that they are buying a property that has a properly functioning septic tank. Oh, and I almost forgot, this customer got me a nice big bottle of water. And what do we got inside the bag right here? We have some goat milk soap. I think this one was something with lemon. And this other one, probably my favorite, whiskey. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Woo! But yes, I love getting tip. It doesn't necessarily have to always be in money. I like getting soap, uh, cases of beer. I've gotten all kinds of stuff, but tips, no matter what form, are always appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a comment. If you have any questions about your septic system or just any questions in particular, drop them down in the comments as well. Be more than happy to uh, make a video covering those topics. And as always, I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all have a good one.